Hello and welcome to my tech farm. My name is Igor and in this video I would like to uh, test the Creality's uh, CR Touch auto leveling sensor. And this package is sent to me by Creality 3D Shop for a review. The problem I have with this uh, sensor is that it requires uh, new Creality 32-bit boards. Uh, first I wanted to test it with my Ender 3 Pro, but I have the older version uh, which has the 8-bit board. The newer version now arrives with uh, Creality's uh, 4.2.2 or, or 0.7 boards. So the only Creality printer I have now uh, for this testing is the Ender 3 V2. But on this I already installed the Creality's B attach. But never mind, so I will replace it now with the Creality's uh, Sear Touch, this new auto leveling kit, and um, I will test it how it works. Uh, of course, I will explain if you have the stock and the 3 V2, how can you replace it. But as I mentioned, don't forget that, that it requires that uh, new uh, 32 bit boards by Creality. Uh, just shortly, a few words uh, how this uh, touch sensor works. Uh, with manual bed leveling, we are actually rotating these knobs and we make the printing surface parallel with the moving pad of the nozzle. Now, uh, this will not replace this, uh, but uh, it will compensate uh, the differences, so it will touch the different points on the printing surface and create some kind of offset mesh. And it will know, for example, if it is on, on, the, on the left side, that it has to go, I don't know, 0.1 mm lower, or on the other side, on, on this corner, maybe a little bit higher, so it will compensate that uh, during 3D printing, uh, that difference. But of course, it is always recommended to level the bed as precise as possible, manually, and uh, then uh, use the auto leveling sensor for the compensating any differences. Uh, one more tip, uh, it is much better to replace those uh, original springs uh, with uh, stronger yellow springs or even with uh, some silicon columns because uh, they will reduce more friction. The stock springs, at least on ns 3 v 2 are too weak and because of the vibration the knobs may uh, unloose a little bit and uh, that's why uh, with the manual bed leveling uh, you have to do it more often. Uh, with B-Attach it will be compensated, but theoretically it is best if it doesn't have to compensate at all, but it is good to have it too, if there is any difference in this offset mesh, it will uh, compensate it in coordinates during 3D printing. Of course, when you are installing the B-Attach, you also have to update the firmware, but I will explain that uh, in this video. These are steps of the installation. So the first is the mechanical installation. And after this, it is important to check if the touching pin is up in the upper position. In, it must be higher than the nozzle. And if it is in lower position, uh, then it has to be lower than the nozzle. The next step is the wiring. Uh, the part which goes to the main board, you can easily follow the cables from the hot end. And with this method, here we have these uh, five cables uh, in one uh, connection. This is much safer because I read that, that uh, there are some versions of the BL touch where two cables are separated and if you don't if you put them uh, in opposite directions then you may fry the main board. Next step is removing the Z limit switch we don't need it anymore. Then uh, we have to update the firmware uh, but here it is important to know which main board you have but uh, the updating is easy because uh, the bootloader is already installed on this new 32 bit boards. Uh, next is to set the Z offset. There's the distance between the uh, BL touch uh, touching pin and the nozzle. And then adding G29 into G codes and uh, this can be set in the slicer because we have there a few lines which is the start uh, code in uh, every G code. And last step is testing uh, and here we can adjust the Z offset during 3D printing if necessary. This is the box. But let's see what's inside. User manual, it's in English. This is the sensor. These are mounting brackets for different 3D printers. The cable, 
this side goes into the uh, CR touch and the other side goes to the main board. As you can see, uh, these uh, cables are in uh, one piece uh, because we have some different versions where two are separated. So you can connect them, for example, in a place where the limit switch is. And some bolts for mounting, zip ties, and the box is empty. Hmm, very interesting what I noticed. I hope it will be visible on camera too that uh, the touching uh, pin is looks like metallic create a touch and see a touch side by side i think the beer touch is a little bit longer but i hope this pin will came out no at least 3 millimeters is longer the beer touch. Uh, but the smoothing bracket, so this one is for Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, uh, this one is for Ender 3 Max, and this one is for Ender 3 V2. But since I already upgraded my extruder to the direct drive uh, and I have to print this uh, fan shroud, uh, this already have uh, this uh, element where I can mount the beer touch. Always the first step is to mechanically mount the beer touch on the head uh, using these brackets. Uh, if you have Ender 3 V2 then you can check my video where I install this beer touch on the stock Ender 3 V2. Uh, in my case I have to remove this uh, beer touch and then uh, mount the new CR touch using this uh, holder on the fan shroud. Now we take out the cable. Now it looks like the cable is completely equal to my previous uh, Creality CR Touch. So I will left this cable because I don't have to open it. But I will show you some footage from my previous video so you can see how to open the main board. But uh, I will just insert uh, this new cable into CR touch hmm, now we have a problem with the mounting <laughs> it looks like in my case it will be more complicated because this is the Creality BL touch and as you can see I have access to the cables here and this is new CR touch and if I mount it here, as you can see, the cable connection is covered now. Well, I need approximately uh, two millimeters. Well, I think my solution will be that I will raise uh, this hose by one millimeter and this hose by one millimeter. Maybe that will be enough. And actually you don't have to do this kind of hacks because uh, you can use the different brackets provided with the kit. These are longer bolts, not, not those provided with the kit are too short in this case for this holder. And since this is the shorter few millimeters, so I have some space and I will insert these two washers between the sensor and the holder. Since the hole is a little bit bigger now on the top, I will insert another two small washers and then M3 nuts. Mm, I think the cables are not pinched. I uh, hope they will hold during the testing until I don't reprint this fresh road. The other side goes into the main board, just follow these cables from the hot end. And there is a dedicated port for on the main board. But we will not need uh, the limit switch, so you can remove the limit switch. And also the cable, 
when the mechanical installation and the wiring is finished, the next step is updating the firmware. Now the Creality's uh, 32-bit boards uh, have the bootloader, so the updating the firmware is very easy. You have to uh, download uh, the BIM file, you can do it from Creality website. Uh, I got a lot of comments that uh, Smith 3D has a very nice uh, firmware for the BL Touch 2, uh, but uh, I noticed that it moves, it uh, recommends the Geos uh, firmware. Uh, anyway, you have to download that BIM file and uh, copy it to one uh, SD card and only that one file has to be there and be careful it has to be different from the previous one so if you forget uh, if you update the firmware and you forget the SD card inside the next time we had the black screen so that's the reason because the same name has can be used only once for updating the firmware so copy the bin file on your SD card insert it into a uh, printer Turn it on and wait a few seconds and the firmware will be automatically updated. You can turn it off, take out the SD card and your printer is ready. Before you turn it on for the first time, uh, move the Z-axis higher manually uh, because you have uh, enough time to, to test it with your fingers uh, before it touch the nozzle if it will stop. Just in case you have time to turn off the switch if there is any problem. It was the self-test, so far so good. Okay, let's go to prepare, auto home, and my left hand will be ready to turn it off if there is any problems. So it goes to the center and we'll take the sample of the and we take the touch. Okay, it's it's okay. Now I can repeat the homing and I will have it to do it itself. In GS firmware in the control you can go to the advanced and here you can set the probe uh, X and Y offset. Yeah, you can this uh, values, uh, they are quite equal like with the BL touch. So in X direction it is in minus 42 millimeters and in Y direction it is in minus 10 millimeters in my in this case if you are using this French route. But what is very important uh, now to set the new Z offset and that's the distance between the touch position and the nozzle. There are several methods uh, but this one works for me. I have the Jeros firmware. After auto homing uh, the Z is raised by 10 millimeters. Uh, Faber, don't let us lowering the Z into negative values. This means I have to set a bigger Z offset, minus 3 or minus 4 mm for example. And after another auto homing, slowly moving down until I have that paper friction. Remember, never go directly to the zero Z coordinate or nozzle will hit the bed. So when you have the perfect friction between the paper and the nozzle, remember that value uh, of the Z coordinate and subtract it for the set Z offset. And I'm on uh, 0.7 millimeters, so I have to set my uh, Z offset to raise it by 0.7 millimeters. To raise it by 0.7 millimeters, it, it means it is minus 2.3. And theoretically now if I will do auto home and go to the zero uh, coordinate of the z-axis, it should be exactly on the uh, where it should be. And now I will move the Z coordinate to the zero. It should stop exactly where I have that friction between paper and the nozzle. Yes. And it's ready for printing. Well, after I clean the bed. <laughs> and don't forget, it is very important. You can not use your old G codes because you, you have to add into the slides, sir. Uh, into start code the G29 command exactly after the G28. That's the command for the auto leveling.
Let's run the leveling command now. I'm just curious how it works. And the auto bed leveling is finished and it has to save to the EPRO. Confirm. Calibration cube. It will start with the printing, but now I am prepared to uh, modify the Z offset if necessary. But it looks good. And my final thoughts about the credit is a uh, new CR touch. Uh, first, I, my thought was sensor like sensor. I mean, I will not uh, notice too big difference, see? but actually I did. Uh, this is the Qualities BL Touch, and uh, when the pin is out, uh, I can feel some backlash. I'm not sure if it is visible on the screen, but definitely there is some backlash. And I notice if sometimes it is on a small angle, there is a little bit more friction before uh, it jumps back. And the other thing. Uh, I had uh, once an accident <laughs> with this one. Probably it was firmware error. It didn't finish the bed leveling, but it started with the printing and it hit the printing surface from the side. And the problem is that when it's not powered, you can see the pin uh, can stay out. With the new beer touch, uh, that cannot happen. If I pull it out by my hand, it will jump back. So even if it is not powered, the default is always uh, strongly in the pin. So it will not accidentally hit the printing surface uh, from the side. Uh, another thing uh, with this uh, beer touch, uh, the advantage is that it is replaceable. This is plastic. And if I, uh, I even get the one uh, spare pin with the kit, and uh, if I unscrew this uh, top screw here, I can take, uh, take out this pin and replace it. Uh, this metallic pin, which is in CR touch, is not replaceable, uh, but I hope it will, I will not <laughs> need to replace it. Uh, but uh, as you saw, uh, the thickness of the, this CR touch is uh, bigger, it's wider, and I believe that the inside mechanics, the bearings, or something like that around this metallic pin, is much more rigid. So for the feeling from mechanical aspect, Yes, I can see that it is much better. The only problem I have with the CR touch, as you saw, it is wider, it's a little bit different size. If you are using these uh, brackets provided uh, in the kit, then you don't, will not have that problem. I have that problem because I'm using this uh, CD printed fan shroud uh, because I mounted the Microsys Direct Drive and uh, for this I have to replace the stock one. And here, unfortunately, this holder uh, is uh, not good for, for new CR touch, so I have to do some hacks with it. But uh, I, maybe I will write to the out, outer uh, to modify just a little bit. Maybe the holes can be closer to the edge, and in that case, uh, the new uh, CR touch can be mounted without any problems. Uh, be careful, maybe uh, it has to be a little bit lower, maybe even one millimeter. In my case, I place the washers, uh, which are I think half millimeter uh, thickness, and they're fine. So you saw it, it working uh, correctly. Well, that was my first experience with the CR Touch. Uh, thank you to Creality 3D Shop for sending me this product. Uh, first, I thought I will mount it uh, temporarily because this uh, beer touch works perfectly. Uh, but I think I will uh, left uh, this one on my Ender 3 v 2 which is my primary printer when I print ABS in, in enclosure. If you have uh, some experience or some uh, additional info with the CR Touch, please let me in the uh, comments. Um, Thank you for watching and happy printing.